Thank you guys for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So, John, what's been going on this past two weeks? Well, you know, just prepping for a Q&A session. No. Nice. Uh, let's see, this two weeks, oh, I just did a, um, for the other, for uh, some of the other things on small uh, actionable habits, I, did, I just recorded a couple other podcasts, one on Reiki energy work. Oh, do tell. What is that? I, I think you'll have to wait and listen. <laughs> in. <laughs> but uh, it was another uh, Primal Blueprint certified coach who I met. Oh, that's kind of interesting. She was talking about how she matched the two together, and and uh, yeah. But I'll, but I'll, I'll uh, oh, I should have it in time to put it in the show notes. All right, I'll put so, that on the list. Show but, notes uh, or but yeah, because. Um, Energy work, uh, I think the fastest way I can explain it is when I took karate and we talked about meridians and stuff, there's a lot of, you'll, you'll hear me in the interview call her foo-foo, you know, she sounds foo-foo, uh, like fake, kind of, kind of energy work, and it's weird, um, without, without being able to have anyone witness it, it's kind of funky how you can kind of sense heat off other people or other things, and that's kind of what it all has to do with, in the meridians in the body, and your chakra and uh, <clears throat> so oh pressure points so if you think okay. about pressure points um, a lot of them uh, a lot of that has to do with that so uh, somebody who is a certified uh, energy worker probably thinks I'm, I'm a complete loon right now for explaining it that <laughs> way so you'll have to definitely listen in <laughs> okay I'll we'll put the link in there so I can go listen to it, and anybody else who's interested. Oh, you know what else I've never said is, uh, so six months ago, I was heavy promoting the Lift Heavy once a day, and because of uh, a new program I teach at the gym, I couldn't, I couldn't take all the, I couldn't take the amount of, of exercise I was doing. So I've actually currently cut out my Lift Heavy day. Oh, what? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Wow. Oh, I, the, the class I teach is called uh, Body Pump, and it's mm-hmm. very common, but it is a, it's um, basically a lot more reps with less weight, but I just couldn't do both. I wow. couldn't, couldn't take both. Mm-hmm. So that's what's, that's new, what's new with me. So if you notice my gums aren't popping out as much, <laughs> and then you, you know, that's what it is. <clears throat> huh, that's you? interesting. So, yeah, Very I have... Girl. Yeah, I I have had quite a few things going on this week. So, one at work, I am changing jobs, so that's about to throw some stir into my routine. Um, I have gone. The expression was throw some stir. That's correct. Is, is that your way of saying <laughs> add stress? I tend to not have a lot of stress, so I'm not going to say it will stress me out, but so are we talking could. a light. Or like one of those, and then like cross it. I'll let you know next time I talk to you. <laughs> yeah. um, Man, I really take us down rabbit holes, don't I? Yeah, that's all right. Portal. That's all right. Then I also have decided that um, through some analyzing of my food. So I think we've talked about before. I have I get terrible headaches a lot, and when I say a lot, probably on a daily basis, and some of them are just annoying headaches, but some of them are more, um, have tried to narrow down what those are or what the causes of them are. And so I started really watching when I was getting them, what I was doing right before that. Um, And I made a correlation between food and the headaches on a lot of days. So we have talked about this numerous times. I have been thinking for probably a year that I have a sensitivity to dairy. I so how do you track the correlation? Uh, so I really was paying attention to the headaches. And again, like I said, I get them so frequently that they're almost routine. But I was trying to be cognizant of when they happened. Um, and then really just looking at you what I had done before that. Food. Well, I have been <clears throat> tracking. So again, this, this happens... Um, pretty soon after I was eating. So it wasn't hard for me to say, okay, it's been 30 minutes since I've had lunch and now I have a raging headache. What did I eat for lunch? Um, I I ate a lot of dairy. So I was really thinking that that was the correlation. So I cut out dairy. 
I'm very sad to say that I cut out dairy because I do love dairy, but I did eat dairy a lot. I probably had it at every meal or at least every other meal. So I did cut that out. Yeah, that'd be really hard for me. Yeah, it's it's been it's been difficult. Uh, not as hard as I thought it was going to be past that first day, but um, I did not take out butter. That's the only that's the only thing that I have been allowing myself. Uh, However, the headaches have not stopped, so I, I think I need to remove the, the butter so that I know that there is zero dairy to make the determination whether that really is um, the cause of it. Yeah, and we've talked before about butter versus ghee. Right, yeah, so, so. oddly, on my way to work today, one of the podcasts that I was listening to, uh, two keto dudes actually hooked me up with the website to get some oh, really hard? good ghee. Yeah, so I think I'm going to check into that tonight when I get home. Do you know the difference between A1 and A2 when it comes to dairy? I do not. Huh. We'll have to. Do you? I don't. We'll <laughs> I've never heard of that term. Well, so my. So just a grading. So my wife is doing a, an elimination thing also, okay. and one of the things it mentioned having to do with proteins and lectins was the type of milk. Oh. And I I'm not going to talk about it because I have no idea what it, the difference between A1 and A2 is. But uh, it's on my list of things to Google. So we'll have to add that to our own question and answer. So uh, yeah. this is the worst question and answer uh, episode well, we've ever done. All we've talked about is questions, no answers. But we are going to <clears throat> start talking about them. And then the other thing that I did, um, we had not talked about this yet, and I definitely have not talked about it on the show yet, but um, there is a company, and the name escapes me, but they are doing a... They're doing a research, um, and so you can sign up for this. It'll bill your insurance, but you send them fecal samples, and then they will analyze the microbiome in your fecal matter, to put it nicely. So I've done two. Are you afraid to say two or something? (laughs) Yeah, not afraid to say two. Um, But I've done two of them so far. I've gotten the report back on the first one. So... I don't really have a full understanding of how to read the report yet, but I did reach out to a friend of ours. In fact, we had interviewed Tracy on a show that we did. And so I reached out to her last night. Um, Some of the suggestions was to uh, eat more vegetables, which I don't like. So that's probably not going to happen. And the other one was to do uh, fermented foods. Do you ever listen to yourself? I mean, so (laughs) let's just point out the fact that you just – poo-pooed on somebody's <laughs> advice. So well, I mean... So if you're listening to this to get advice, well, you know... No, it's great for other people, right, but... It doesn't work for you. Yeah, for me to incorporate more vegetables than I currently do, that's probably not going to happen. Just being like realistic a, about like it. Like a greens supplement. You know, you can get those power greens, and it's like uh, green leafy vegetables all put into uh, powder you put in water. It tastes like you're drinking grass. I don't know. See, I need to talk to you offline, too, because well, I, I don't know about I'll those either. You, I'll bring you in some... Okay. And you too. Actually, we should save it, and you can drink it live. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, sure. That would be highly entertaining. Yeah. Like we did like we with, did with the, the eggs. yeah, mm-hmm. like we did with the peanut butter and the peanut butter and eggs. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I. I mean, there's some things that I need to work on with that. Uh, I'm going to reach out to the doctor that did the analyzing of that and see what I need to do. So there was a few things that were high. There were quite a few things that were low. And then I tested positive on one of them. And, again, I don't really understand what that means other than it's not normal, right? So they they go through and they rate them either negative, positive, high, low, or normal. So I'm assuming if it's not classified as normal or negative, that's something I need to address. So I'm going to do that, and then I can report back to you guys what. More to come. I like that we're airing out what we're working on. Yeah. Kind of more fun that way. We got away from doing that. But just – I want to remind everybody that we're all on a health journey and people are just in different places, so wherever you are, which I guess brings us into the question and answers. Yes, yes it does. So this time we try to organize, so we get questions a lot and we don't, we got out of the habit of talking about them. We still take them uh, sometimes at the end of the shows and whatnot or, you know, as we're talking, if it's relative to what the topic is, but we're trying to bring back the Q&A because as we look back at stats, they were actually some of the most 
reviewed shows. Uh, people must have gone back and wanted to listen to them again, those type of things. So we do want to keep that up. So we try to maybe uh, organize them by questions that we get a lot. So one of, I think, the most, co the most questions that I get anyway is, you know, what can I eat that is high fat but lower in protein because people look at the macros? Um, and that, that question comes in a lot of different ways. But the reason why I wanted to tackle that first is that's something that I've even brought up. It's been a struggle for me when it comes to um, kind of planning my, my day. And if you, th if you think back or listen back to the session that we did about mass prep, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, finding what your caloric goal was and your macronutrient ratios, and that is probably the thing that helps me the most identify the meals that I try to do. So if we think back about the two weeks of default keto meals that you're planning out or primal meals or, you know, whatever, whatever uh, you know, health direction you're, you're uh, experimenting with, I found that I needed to add fat to kind of, to so one, I felt more satiated, those type of things. And we, I, without going into why, we, we've done a whole entire episode on, get, on getting fat in there. So I'll just say that for me, the easiest thing has been MTC oil. I very easily can put that on top of vegetables. It doesn't change the taste. I can put it, um, you know, if the chicken breast, I can easily put it on top of the chicken breast. Uh, how much do you how much do you put on there? Just to kind of give a frame of reference. Just squirt it. Yeah, that's it. But I mean, like, it's, is it enough that it's, keep it. that it's like? Well, I don't have it swimming. Coating in there. or? Uh, I would say about a tablespoon max. Okay. Um, okay. So because it's a fat, you get a lot more calories right. faster. But me personally, if I have a meal that. That I, I mean, I can almost tell the next day when I wake up if I had a high, had a meal that was too high in carb because I'm hungry, and I and I I wake up hungry and I don't normally wake up hungry. So that's kind of my litmus test or my you know lick your finger, hold it up and see which direction that wind's blowing. I mean that kind of gives me the red flag that says you know I need to think about what I ate last night and what I could do differently, um, and uh, that's made a big difference to me. The the other things that are easy is it's very easy to add also butter to something. Yeah. Uh, that definitely does change the taste. But for me, pretty much the MTC is, is very easy to add um, quite a few grams of, of fat without having any noticeable difference to the food. <clears throat> and then the only other thing is that I, I plan. I, I just make sure that I don't have as much protein and we and I think before there has been some meals where, uh, you know, if you just think about the cut of steak, I used to, I still do love fillets. I, I do. I love fillets. Um, but now I just make sure they're wrapped in bacon. There you go. So how about you? Anything that I kind of left out there that you do that's helpful? Yeah. So really, I mean, I use the same. You're, you're the weirdo that once <laughs> said that you would just have a pat of butter, right? I, I do. That, yeah. I cannot get my mind wrapped around that. <laughs> Um, well, then don't come to my desk this week because um, in one of our conversations before, I had talked dairy, about... You can't have it. Well, I've, I've oh. been doing butter. That's the only, uh, that's the yeah. only one. But so we had talked before that I thought my calories were low. And yeah. so I tracked them for a while. Then I stopped. I got lazy. And I was like, okay, I think that I'm low again. So I tracked it for the day, 920 calories. So I have been bringing butter chunked into little squares. And so as I'm sitting at my desk, I'll just get it out and just put butt. So, yeah, so don't come by my desk, anybody, for the next week or two. Uh, but I do, I do incorporate butter in a lot of things. So I've talked about before, like my scrambled eggs. When I um, scramble them up in the, in the bowl, I actually put melted butter inside the eggs, scramble it, and then put butter in the pan as I uh, fry it as well. Uh, put, I put butter in my coffee. Um, oh, did, I, did I tell you that I got my bacon and didn't get it cured this time? You did not. I did not. I didn't get it cured this time. So it's like these little teeny mini thin um, pork chops. Nice. 
Yeah, I'm, I've got half of mine sliced and half of them in the slab, pork, the pork belly slab. Uh, I should have got pork belly. I did not. Uh, I got it all yeah. sliced and fresh, and I'm the only one in my family that seems to be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I totally took us off the topic there. But that's a good um, way. I didn't even mention that. that yeah, like yeah a, that would be a great like, way. Well, I guess it's, it's the cut of meat, right? Yeah. So pork belly, yeah, that is. But you're getting the protein in that, too. I mean, the fat to protein ratio is definitely heavier on the fat side, but it is a good, it is a good fat. Yeah. Um, Call back to that same two keto dudes, right? Because when he's yeah. doing an experiment or he's only eating pork belly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Um, well, we're all over the place. But I do, you know, I do put a lot in my drink. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like the uh, coffee, you but you can do. that question? There was actually a question. Somebody said, the can I do keto without a bulletproof coffee? And yes, the I answer is yes. <laughs> I don't have. I don't usually do bulletproof coffee. I don't put it in GC oil. I, I put a little heavy, heavy whipping cream. Yeah. First of all, if you don't like coffee, don't drink coffee. I mean, that would be my answer to that one. Um, if you don't want to put fat in your drink, don't do it. It's not a requirement, but for me, it's an easy way for me to get my fat up, um, and I enjoy the flavor. And since I'm dairy free right now, I actually switched over to um, coconut cream instead of or coconut milk, I guess it's called actually, but it's thick um, instead of the heavy whipping cream. So those are just some of the things that I do. But yes, you do not have to incorporate bulletproof anything or fatty drink of any sort. You can drink plain black coffee. You can, I mean, as long as it's, you know, within what you're supposed to be eating, if you're doing keto, you want to make sure anything you put in it is following those guidelines. Uh, Same with primal or or, uh, paleo as well. But no, you don't, I mean, it's not a requirement. Not everybody does it, and you don't have to. Yeah. So I think it's, I think just when you Google it, it's, a lot of people talk about that. Yeah. Especially when it relates to fasting, which to me breaks the fast, but we've had that conversation before. Yeah. We've and that's actually yeah, another fasting. question. <laughs> oh, is it? Is fasting okay. a must? Okay. Well, we'll save that. So okay. we So we try to do them in the order that we get them most... Uh, okay. So, so one of them uh, that was asked is, can I exercise when I'm eating low carb, high fat? And well, I'm a perfect example of that. Um, I have always been somewhat low carb ever since I've been primal. So the last five years, I would, or six years, I would have been quote unquote. If you if you gave me a label, I'd probably be one of the labels you give me. Um, I started, I started doing, even doing cardio, um, low carb and I maybe had a little bit of the fatigue. You know, you'll hear people talk about it when it talks about long distance endurance. If you're a, a long distance endurance person, I would recommend following a, a podcast that's related to that because I think there are, um, as you sweat, those type of things. So long distance, you you you're, you're decreasing the minerals in your body. There's there's a lot of things that I think are a little bit more specific to somebody who's doing endurance. And uh, yep. I think one of our first, actually one of our first question and answer, we had a guy who was a tra- triathlon ask a question about that same topic. Yep. And uh, but uh, if it comes to lifting heavy, um, like I, um, I mentioned earlier, I do four days. Uh, so that would be four hours total if I go all out um, in between uh, body pump, CX works, and a little bit of hit, and I have no problem whatsoever. My body's completely adapted to that, and I do it all fasted. Yeah, and John definitely is the expert in the space no, <laughs> above me. Um, I have experience doing it. But what I tell people in general is. It kind of depends on where you're coming from. If you're coming from a very heavy, sad diet, you may want to hold off for a couple of weeks until you get past um, and so until you're a little bit more adapt to the low carb, just because you probably are going to have that fatigued period. But if you normally exercise and that's something that you regularly do, you love it and you don't want to take a break from it, do it. I mean, it's I don't I don't have a a preference for people one way or the other, whether they should or they shouldn't. But like you said, if it's somebody who is 
um, doing some endurance training, if they're doing, you know, triathlons or marathon training or they're, you know, the next bodybuilder, they they probably have a different protocol than just your normal Joe. Yeah, so, and, I, and yeah, because, I mean, I think it's not just that. It's also maybe some branch chain amino acids or just right. that kind of stuff in general. Yep. But uh, like I said, that's that's a small, small, small sliver of folks. So yeah, I I think it's if you have a tra- transitional period, it would be a couple of weeks, and yeah. But yeah. Yep. So a question that I got answered or answered a question I got asked that I had no idea of the answer, and as a matter of fact, I didn't even know it was a thing. Is do people who attempt keto is it common for them to be constipated? And I said, I've never heard of that. And then I found out later that it's very common. Yeah, it is very common. And it's common because people are, their bodies are changing um, as part of their change in their eating habits. And because their body is changing, it is also Mm -hmm. not holding on to some of the things that it would have. So, for instance... When you um, stop being a glucose burner, your body does not hold and retain your water and your salt. So, quite honestly, um, I have always recommended either upping some fats or MCT oil. That helps. Uh, But I actually recently uh, have I listened to a doctor uh, talking on this exact subject, and they are suggesting that a lot of the cause is the magnesium and the salt because your body is flushing those out. So if you right away get your salts where they need to be and you are uh, having your magnesium where it should be, that you should see less of a constipation issue. Why do you think I didn't have it? Just because I came in from primal and I was just already was starting to be a little maybe. Or maybe or maybe your salt was already where it needed to be. Um, I mean, a lot of people, even with the fad diet, they eat a lot of salt. But somebody like me coming into it, I was salt fearing and I didn't, well, first of all, I hated the flavor of it. I knew that it wasn't healthy for me, right? Because that's what I was taught. And so I never used it, ever. And so for me, I came into this with having no salt intake and then my body is flushing out whatever salt I was getting from food and drinks anyway. So, um, yeah, it. I mean, I guess, and again, it's going to depend on every single person. Everybody's individual. So it really is just, it's really going to determine where you're coming from, whether that happens. It's been like 10 years, but when I was having my, uh, re-looked at my heart murmur and my heart issues, uh, I couldn't, uh, they had me do a no salt diet. That was the worst two weeks. I said, I'll stick it out for two weeks and see if it makes a difference. I just track my blood pressure all the time and stuff. And it was the worst two weeks of my life. Yeah. So it was so I many like salts and everything. And to be honest, part of part of it today is because when you change your eating, your taste buds change. <clears throat> but I can't imagine not eating salt. I salt everything a lot now. You know, and, and the type of salt has it changed is. for me, right? Because yeah. now, like now, I do different types of salt as opposed to before. I was probably only doing the stuff that was. You know, that when it rains, the white table salt. Yeah, the regular yeah. white table salt. Yeah, yeah and, and we, I mean, we've talked about it before, but that does matter because getting, actually, if you use pink Himalayan salt specifically, I know that it has magnesium in it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're kind of getting, you know, if you use something like that that has minerals in it, uh, I think there's a gray Celtic salt as well. That's that, exactly what I have at home right now. Yeah. I have Himalayan here and I have uh, gray. I haven't tried the gray. I I haven't seen it anywhere, but I would like to try that. So I'll, I'll never believe where I got it. <laughs> I know we should own stock in Amazon. <laughs> I swear we should. Uh, <clears throat> so no fiber. No no comment on fiber. There was no comment on fiber. No. Um, no doctor said fiber. No. No. And honestly, most of the doctors that I have listened to are really not a firm believer that fiber is as important as we once thought it was. <clears throat> yeah, I won't make a definitive, but I would not be sad if that was the solution that came out because, again, I'm not that big of a vegetable eater. And 
I don't want to become a vegetable eater. <laughs> well, when I had that miracle rice, man, that's all fiber. I mean, that's why it? that's why it's so low carb because you don't like digest anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they're. I mean, I'm not going to say that they were saying that there was no correlation with it, but that was not one of the things that they came forward and said that was one of the causes of constipation. So. Yeah, and um, from the I know I mentioned the miracle rice. I was fine with it, but the rest of my family thought it was like eating ru- piece, little pieces of rubber. Yeah, see, I've heard that. I haven't tried that yet, but I've heard that it wasn't that appetizing. All right, so we'll move on <laughs> from uh, constipation. Um, one of the questions that a lot of people ask, and I really wanted to put this in here because I think that we need to maybe clarify this a little bit. So they want to know, do calories really matter? Calories really matter. So I am famous, or not maybe famous, but infamous <laughs> for at one point saying calories don't matter at all. And I think I may have been a little abrupt, but I think since since then I've kind of recandered a little bit that they do matter from a overall body energy perspective, but there's just so many more factors than I think the reason why I was so anti-calories was because I lived through that exercise more, eat less, and, you know, gain some weight and just couldn't understand the math, you know what I mean? So then I had to kind of go through and, and the more you dig into it, the more you realize that, you know, your metabolism, like all those factors, your hormones, you know, everything make just a really big difference into how calories or or what what they do to you from a so so to get my point across let me let me just say like for example fat <clears throat> fat has the you know if you ate the same amount of calories of fat versus carbs carbs would you would burn fast, your insulin would spike, but if you think about the fat, it would be more of a slow burning. So just those two differences right there. Or, for example, protein. If you got to a point where your body wanted to store protein because it ate too much of it, uh, you just the, your body processing it has a 30% overhead um, hit on average. So there's, there's just those, those type of things make it so just... Uh, it's just not simple math, which is why I think I was so anti-calories for a while. Uh, but since then, I, I think I've switched a little bit. I think overall they do. I mean, I think sometimes, depending on what you're eating, you can consume a lot of extra calories. And uh, especially when you start getting into, you know, high-fat stuff. So before, you know, I would, I could eat a piece of cake and it would be 1,000 calories. And I could not... Un, I could not exercise a, out of a bad diet. Right. But if you flip that around, um, you know, I, I don't ever have a thousand calories and, of cake anymore, and I'm always, I'm my, I'm not as hungry. So I think I may, on average, actually eat a little bit less. So again, if you're not tracking, it's hard to put a finger on it. So I don't know what are your, I kind of. I mean, yeah. that kind of give you why I was so against them. Was, yeah, I and I know was, that we both have said that, right? Calories don't matter. And I think for me, in the context of what we knew calories to be, calories don't matter. Because when you talk to people about calories, their instant thought is calorie reduction. And that, I think for me, that's why I wanted to get their focus off of the calorie side of it, because that's the hardest thing for most people to break in their their mental structure because that's what we always have been taught. Like no matter, you know, sometimes they say fat's bad, sometimes they say fat's good. That has always fluctuated, but the calories, as far as in my lifetime, that has always been the thing. Restrict your calories, you lose weight. So that's where I came from saying um, calories don't matter because if you eat a healthy, well-balanced, diet, whether it's keto or primal, um, the calories are going to fall into place. And so I wanted to take people's focus off of calories 
But I know in recent weeks, again, we have talked about calories, and I have said my calories are too low, and I need to adjust, and I need to work on that. So, And you're doing that because you're trying to, you think it, when your body doesn't get enough calories, it starts to gear down your exactly. metabolism. Yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's the risk of, of saying calories don't matter. Yep. If you're ignoring that, then I, I think that's where maybe I, I was, because I didn't have that problem. Yeah. And that's why I wanted us to clarify it, right? Because we both have made the statement that calories don't matter. But I think the takeaway for this is calories don't matter in the context of what you think calories are. Um, but There's again, an overarching um, premise, you know, you need to make sure you're in that spot so you're not negatively impacting. Exactly. Your I mean, I think that's, and when we talked about fasting, one of the things we, we definitely harped on was still trying to get the same amount of food that you would have got in those three meals into the one or two if you're looking at intermittent fasting. Yep. And the reason we said that is just for those particular reasons right there. Yep. All right, so I guess we beat the calorie um, <laughs> to death. So um, we've got cyclical ketosis comes up a lot. So we almost always get asked the same question. And the question varies on how long, but it has something to do with, can you really stay on ketosis for more than three to six months without having like a carb refeed? You know, once you die, well, they don't actually say once you once you die, <laughs> but I mean, the point is, is it is it bad to stay in ketosis for a lo a long period of time? So, I'm gonna say no. Uh, it's gonna depend on who you ask and how well they understand it. But I, April the 16th will be two years for me, and as far as I can tell, my heart's still pumping and I still have oxygen. So um, my, I get regular blood work done for my doctor every four months at, by my request because so many people, especially my family members, think that I'm killing myself. And so I cannot stress to them it, verbally or physically that I'm fine, but they, because, you know, I can say I am if I'm not really feeling well. They don't know that. But I can't lie on a blood test. That's, it is what it is. So by my request, I have blood work done every four months, and I show it to people. You don't think I'm healthy? Here it is. This is, this is my health. And I have not been healthier in my entire life than I am right now being keto for two years. I do not cycle carbs. Um, I'm not going to say that I never have accidental cheats, but I don't purposely go eat something that I know it does not follow my plan. Uh, if I mean, I'm just like anyone else. I'm on vacation and I eat things that I'm not 100% sure what's in them. Um, I, I attempt to make the right choices, and I think that I'm making, you know, eating things that are falling in plan, but... Again, I don't know how they made it exactly, and when you're sitting and on a beach in Mexico, you don't always, they're not always going to tell you, right? So those are the kinds of things that I won't say that I have never cheated, but I don't intentionally carve up or cycle or get off plan. Um, I know that there are people who have done this for 15 years or more. In fact, we uh, interviewed Ross from FBOM. And I think he's over 20 years doing this. So um, doctors and medical professionals will tell you differently, I would assume. But anecdotally, I can tell you that I have never been healthier. So, so we haven't talked about it in detail because I think neither one of us are knowledgeable about it. But there is that there is a segment of the folks who have that is it EPA4 EPA gene? Yes, yes, there is something. So so we don't want to blanketly say that, you know, but I mean, so if you're feeling like complete garbage for a long period of time, you know, you may need to think about that. But I mean, one of the things I, I looked at when I had my genes is I wanted to know, and it varies, that three versus four, and I think neither one of us are smart enough to talk about that. But there are some people that probably that wouldn't work for. But really, I know I've probably said this a thousand times. 
if somebody's looking at carb backloading or carb receding, usually they're like a bodybuilder or a endurance runner and they're working that into their plan and their refeed is, we're talking 30 or 40 grams of carbs. We're not right. talking about... Well, and we're also talking keto, like... Right? Yeah, and we're also talking something like a sweet potato versus a half a piece of German chocolate cake. Well, nobody eats right? half a piece of German well, chocolate cake. Really. <laughs> True. Or, you know, you know, take me, for example. Remember when I went to Chicago and I, and I was like, screw it, I'm doing a deep dish pizza. And I <laughs> felt like complete garbage. I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I thought I would. So, I mean, I definitely can't hold. I mean, I am nowhere near your standard when it comes to how long I've been, like, solid. Uh, <clears throat> but but I definitely have been, like I said, low carb for like five, at least yeah. five years. I don't, I don't have a problem yet. And talking with, um, with the people who have that gene, so I guess, I guess for me with that is the first and foremost, listen to your body. Like no one is advocating that you do this and feel like garbage. There is a period that you may feel a bit fatigued. There is a period of the keto flu, which we've talked about. But if it is an extended amount of time, you probably need to go research or look at what the cause is. No one is saying to just be feeling bad all the time. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But by the same token, don't think it's not working for you because there's something that you don't have dialed in. So just listen to your body. So easy to say that it's so hard to actually do that. <laughs> Um, yeah, we try to keep this to a, a half hour, but we, we tend to always go over. So if it, let's uh, skip down to one that I, I really want to hit on because it it always mind. It's, uh, I guess once you've been doing it for a while, it's kind of mind boggling to me. But it's uh, why is keto so complicated? Because people ask me that. Yeah, quite often. And it doesn't always say complicated, but why is keto so difficult or whatever? Yeah. And at this point, I always think it's not. So I don't know if they're just thinking about the things they can't have and not the things they can have, but I mean... I think there's a combination. Stay, yeah, I think know. there's a combination because a lot of us um, do tend to focus on the things that we aren't allowed to have or that we can't have versus the things that we can. So, again, yeah, I can't have the piece of German chocolate cake, and that's what I'm focusing on because that's what I really want at this birthday party, but there's ribeyes served with, you know, whatever. Those are the things that when people ask me that, I try to remind them that if they just change their mindset, um, that, that struggle might not be as severe if they start focusing on the positive side of that versus the negative. But the other thing that I think people find this completely complicated is because the web has everything. So if you want some elaborate meal, you can find it on Pinterest or some recipe site, cookbooks. You're talking about keto junk food? Not, not just keto junk food, but like really elaborate meals. First of all, when you weren't keto, you probably went to Burger King and got a crappy meal. So why now are you trying to make a meal for your family that you need to be a five-star chef for? Um, oh, so you're saying, oh, I really like General Tso's chicken, so I'm going to Google keto General Tso's chicken, and then exactly. it's this multi-hour. Exactly. Keep it simple. Cook you some meat. Eat you some vegetables. There's your meal. I mean... It doesn't have to be complicated. We make it as complicated as we want it to be. That and and that truly is my blanket answer. The the diet or this way of eating in general is not complicated. You as the person doing it is causing it to become complicated. I don't know why I always go back to Texas Roadhouse, but there was a time when I would have thought it would be very hard for me to not eat those rolls mm -hmm. or the peanuts that are on the table or whatever. And I think it's mostly because you're anticipating the meal, so you're already starting to get your mind wrapped around be hungry. Mm -hmm. But, man, you don't want to take, like, a steak home. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
or I don't know. So I guess I guess there was quite a bit of time in my life where I would have had a really hard time at Texas Roadhouse, but now I got no problem. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm going to have a ginormous steak. Oh, and by the way, the, the ribs at Chili's that they say don't have barbecue sauce on them, that rub still has brown sugar. I Googled oh, no. it. Oh, I, 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 I had a half a rack of ribs from Chili's, and I was like, oh, this and the waitress is like, oh, no, there's no barbecue sauce on it. It's a dry rub and everything. And, yeah, I'm like, these are a little too good. Yeah. I Googled it when I got home. Brown sugar. Yeah, that figures. Yeah. I mean, not, but again, not a lot. And that's one of those things okay. that you live and learn, right? Yeah. But you didn't intentionally go do that. You ate it and then were like, ah, this is a little been, bit too good. That would have been a big difference, right? So, you know, you go to Texas Roadhouse and you get right. ribs. And that barbecue sauce has got to have, you know, right. five or six times uh, the sugar probably in it. Yeah. So, yep. ribs from Texas Roadhouse. That's a, that's probably harder for me. I have never had them. So. Oh, they're really good. They're like perfection cooked. We, Yeah. And they they have some that I mean you can have them not put the barbecue sauce on it because they slab some barbecue sauce on it I think before they stick it on your plate to take out to the table so you can get it without that but they're, they're just like chilies there's got to be something in those ribs yeah well crack maybe you'll be getting ribs from your or did you or did you get your cow yet no okay a couple so I get all mine week, Friday week I'm pretty stoked about it. Hey, did I you get my did cow you and my pig. did you grind the organs into your hamburger meat? I have not, but I did get them. You're I, I didn't manually grind them. I am because and because you I give it to your dog too, right? I do. Yeah, I do feed it to my dog. But the reason I didn't want them to do it is because I if I don't like it, I don't want to have oh, all of my committed. meat ruined. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I'm just going to grind it. Yeah. Yeah, my friend has a grinder, so I'm going to take it over and grind that. Um, and mix it in with the burger. I've got a grinder for my KitchenAid. Oh, I want one. They're cheap. Really? They're because they're on they Amazon. When I looked at them. Yeah, they're. Well, I mean. I, I was gonna buy one. Like, I did look at one. Like I bought mine. It was on sale for thirty-five bucks. Oh, yeah, they're that cheap. I looked. The one I looked at was like I don't know over a hundred. I mean, the only disadvantage of the KitchenAid is is it's got the um, grinder so high. It's like you got to almost stack something for the meat to go into. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it plops down like a, oh, you know, like a yeah. foot and a half. Yeah. Because it goes in the attachment on the top. Man, I totally get us off topic. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we've ran over and completely gone off topic 20 times. Yeah. So we do have questions left. So what we'll do with these, um, if this was one of yours that we didn't get to, apologize. But we will put them in for next month. So... Our plan is to do it on the fourth Wednesday. Hey, I've got a question. What should I do with my question? That's right. So send us questions to ketoniancorner at gmail.com. You could actually even post it to me on our Facebook page. You could put it on our website, ketoniancorner.com. Or um, if you work with us, just swing by one of our desks and, and come ask us. But... Uh, we also would like some input from you guys. Uh, we've asked before. Let us know what you think about our forum. Our forum, and you know, if if you like the structure, if you like what we're doing, if you guys have somebody that you would like us to interview, please, please send that to us. So I am working to get um, some more people that we can interview. And John and I really enjoy doing that. So if there's somebody in particular that you guys would like us. Especially if it's local. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I keep thinking in the back of my head, we've got some plate. Keto is becoming more and more popular. So I, I totally biffed what would have been a great interview with, uh, I was supposed to do it over the holiday season uh, for with somebody who works at Culver's. Uh, so, Which maybe we can still reach out to. Her. Yeah, I mean, but I I, dro- I totally dropped the ball. So if she's listening yeah. to this, then sorry. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I mean, she point blank asked me, told me a time and date and everything, and I totally. Hopefully, she wasn't sitting there broken, <laughs> waiting for me <laughs> to show up. No, no, we didn't have a so. set time and date, but I definitely uh, forgot about it. But anyway, yeah, definitely post. Uh, you know, we're doing this for you guys, and if you're not getting value out of it, you know, we need to. You know, 
pivot. Yep, absolutely. Go give us reviews on iTunes. Only for good. Uh, no, we don't care. <laughs> we want to know. I don't want bad Good reviews. or bad? Why not? We need to know it. We're good with it. Okay, fine. Give for it. For adults. <laughs> when you just solicited bad, yeah. bad feedback. Whatever. We want, we want feedback, period. Good or bad, let us know. Um, we hope that it's good because we hope you love us. But give us your feedback. I mean, I love us. So let's just check, make sure. Uh, do we have any questions out? We do not. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for this episode. And we'll talk to you all again next time. See you.